Did you know that some of the most important muscles in the entire body for functionality and for the health and longevity of your physical structure are muscles that almost nobody trains when they go to the gym? And that's not because this group of muscles is some well-kept secret that no one's ever heard of. These muscles have been extensively studied, and weakness and poor stamina in them has been directly linked in the scientific literature to chronic neck pain, headaches, and one of the most common forms of postural dysfunction in the world. In this video, you're going to learn three simple but super effective exercises for strengthening those muscles, and I'm also going to show you exactly how strong you need to be in order to prevent pain and safeguard the health and longevity of your upper spine. The muscles that I'm talking about are collectively known as the deep neck flexors, and they're located here, right up against the front of your cervical spine, and they're responsible for stabilizing your neck, maintaining the normal secondary curve, and keeping you upright. Basically, it's these muscles' job to make sure that your neck functions the way that it's supposed to. But here's the thing. 78% of people out there have cervical spine deformation in the form of a forward head position, which stretches out those deep neck flexors and inhibits their ability to contract and their endurance capacity. So we know that being in a forward head position elongates the deep neck flexors and prevents them from functioning the way that they're supposed to. It essentially weakens those muscles. And we know that weak deep neck flexors that have poor endurance are directly linked to chronic neck pain. We also know that strengthening the deep neck flexors can improve your posture and eliminate pain. But the question is, how strong do you need to be in those muscles in order to accomplish those things? And for that, we'll look to this article that was published in the journal Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation back in 2011. Now, these researchers set out to establish the standard for deep neck flexor endurance so that we could say, hey, this is what's considered normal for people who don't have any pain or problems in their neck. So these researchers took 126 men and women across a very broad age range, and they gave them all something called the deep neck flexor endurance test. And overall, what they found was that healthy, asymptomatic men could hold this test for 39 seconds and healthy asymptomatic women could hold the test for 29 seconds. And it's easy to take the deep neck flexor endurance test yourself so that you can see how you stack up. To perform the deep neck flexor endurance test, just grab a timer and go flat down on your back on a firm surface. Then from that resting position, you're gonna tuck your chin as far as you can, closing the distance from your chin to your sternum. With your head in that position, you're gonna lift the back of your head and neck one inch off the floor. Time starts now. And you're just going to focus on holding this position and especially on maintaining the chin tuck. Now, the test is over when one of three things happen. Number one, the muscles completely fatigue out and your head just drops back down to the ground. Number two, your head begins slowly elevating higher than one inch off the floor because other muscles have taken over. Or number three, the angle from your chin to your sternum breaks open and your head drops into extension. When any one of those occur, time stops immediately. If you struggled with this test, here are three simple exercises that you can use to build up the level of strength and stamina that's required in these muscles to maintain proper posture and dramatically reduce your risk for chronic neck pain. Exercise number one is a chin tuck head lift, and this is definitely the most straightforward of the three because what you're doing here is practicing the exact same position that's used during the assessment. Just like with the deep neck flexor endurance test for this exercise, you will go flat down on your back on a firm surface. From the resting position, tuck your chin as far as you can, and with your head in that position, lift the back of your head and neck one inch off the floor and hold. One pro tip for this exercise is to bring your gaze from this position to about a 45 degree down angle, which will really help you to activate those deep neck flexors and maintain that chin tuck position. And then you just want to keep your time in mind. If you failed on the deep neck flexor endurance test at, say, 15 seconds, you'd be shooting for 16 or 17 seconds. And once you hit that time, there's no need to push to failure. Just come down and rest one to two minutes, and then you can try again, slowly building your time as the days and weeks go by. Believe it or not, exercise number two is a tongue press, which according to recent research, can be just as effective as a head lift for activating the deep neck flexors. To perform this technique, just go flat down on your back and allow the back of your head to rest comfortably on the floor. From there, you're gonna seal your lips, but keep just a little bit of space in between your teeth. You'll then press the front third of your tongue up against the roof of your mouth. 
you're going to press it and hold it there. And the longer you hold, the more you should feel your tongue kind of flatten out and expand laterally. But you want to make sure that the tip of your tongue is not pressed up against the back of your front teeth. So you're going to press and hold for 20 to 30 seconds with light to moderate pressure. And you should feel your tongue just spread out as it's in there. You're going to feel some tension build here in the front of your neck. Exercise number three is something that I call active traction, and it allows you to activate and strengthen not just the deep neck flexors, but all of the muscles that are responsible for stabilizing your cervical spine and maintaining a tall upright posture at the exact same time. To perform active traction, you just take an active traction unit and slide it on your head the same way that you would wear a headband. You want to make sure that the weighted portion of the band is positioned to the front and sitting just above your eyebrows. And then with the band in place, you can watch television, work at a standing workstation, or go out for a short walk. But this form of exercise is unique for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, because the resistance here is wearable, it allows you to train all of these muscles for their primary function, which is holding you up against gravity for an extended period of time with no conscious effort. All of the strengthening here takes place without you even having to think about it. And second, research has demonstrated that just five minutes of this type of training is effective for improving posture and significantly reducing forward head position. So now you've got three simple exercises that you can use to relieve pain, improve posture, slash your risk for headaches, and most importantly, safeguard the health and functionality of your cervical spine for a lifetime. If you want to find out more about active traction and what makes it the most effective technique for permanently correcting posture, I've got a video that talks all about it here. Beyond that, I just want to thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button and the little subscribe button before you head out of here, and I'll see you next time.